I hear there's a lot more people working from home these days. And guys, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to take some time and talk about best practices around working out of your house and having to do video conferencing and web conferencing out of your house. So in this video, I'm going to break it down into a couple different sections. We're going to talk about before, how do I get my room ready for video conferencing? Where should I do video conferencing and and audio conferencing and web conferencing? We're going to talk about joining the meeting. How do we make sure that I'm actually successful joining one of these meetings? We're going to go over that. And then we're going to talk about some etiquette during the meeting. Like for example, making sure you're on mute. Probably one of the biggest things you can do when when you join a meeting initially. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is just how do I make sure I actually closed out of the call and it's not still on and people are still looking at me after the, after the meeting ended. So with that, uh, let's go through the before section here. And you know, one of the biggest things you can do is pick an area inside your house where you can, where you can be alone. You know, the worst thing in the world is if you got your roommate or whatever blasting some music or doing pots and pans and whatever around, and it's super annoying and no one can hear you. So make sure you pick a quiet space. The next thing I would tell you to do is make sure your camera is adjusted and and it's actually looking at you. I can't tell you how many times I've jumped on video conferencing calls and the guy's got his camera here, it's pointed to the ceiling, it's pointed down. Or sometimes too, people don't realize that, oh, at my house, I've got a laptop dock, but my camera is actually in the lid of the laptop. So you wanna make sure your laptop lid is up if you're gonna be doing video conferencing, if that is where your camera is. Then I would say make sure your camera is clean. This is just some monster screen cleaner. I use it on all my TVs. I use it in my car. I use it for my web cameras. Uh, Clean your stuff. Make sure there's no smudge marks anywhere. This will help out a lot too, making sure that everybody else can see you nice and clear. Uh, The next thing I would say to do is make sure you don't have any weird glares or super bright lights, you know, shining at you. Make sure that your lighting is good. You know, make sure you have lights on overhead. Make sure you're not in a super dark area. You know, if you are, hey, get a little light over here on the side. Just make sure it's not facing directly at the camera or it'll, or it'll wash you all out. Uh, you know, make sure you're, the area that you're in too, guys, is clean. Right now, this room is a mess. I've got a, a monster truck behind me over there. I've got a hedge trimmer back there. I've got a pile of junk over here. You know, when you're doing video conferencing, you want it to look a little bit professional. So clean up your room. Don't make it look like, don't let make it look like a mess. Uh, and that goes for yourself too. You know, right now, 15 minutes ago, wearing this UB tank top was fine. I was eating lunch, but now I got to do some video conferencing or web conferencing. You know, I probably should change my clothes. I probably should put, put on something a little bit more appropriate. So, so with that guys, you know, those are the top tips for before I actually join a meeting. I'm gonna clean this place up, I'm gonna change my shirt, and then we're gonna talk about joining a meeting and making sure you can get into that meeting successfully. So you have a meeting coming up in a couple minutes here, and one of the things that I usually like to do, especially if I'm in a new area or not sure about my bandwidth, is I might do a speed test. Just go to speedtest.net real quick, run it. You can see right now I've got 61 megabits down, 93 megabits per second up, totally fine. For video conferencing, web conferencing, you know, aim for 500 kilobits a second or higher. That usually going to provide you a good high definition video feed uh, back and forth. If you don't have that, or you're a little bit under, you know, that's still okay. WebEx will compensate for that. It will, it will start to go down to like a standard definition type picture, but you're going to still be able to do video conferencing successfully. Uh, coincidentally, when I ran this, I noticed that Zoom right now is possibly having problems and Microsoft Teams is having problems. So if you run this and everything is clean and you're having issues getting in, you know, you might want to check like downdetector.com or something like that because, uh, you know, could be quite possible that Zoom's having issues or, or Microsoft Teams having issues. So back to, you know, a couple minutes before your meeting here, um, try to get in guys, try to look at these invites five to 10 minutes ahead of time. You don't want to be that guy that's coming in the last minute. Oh, sorry, I had issues getting in. Come in to your invite five, 10 minutes beforehand and just click it, especially if it's your first meeting of the day or maybe it's been the first video meeting you've had or web meeting you've had in, in quite some time. You know, if there's, an, if there's an application on your desktop that needs to launch for this, 
it may need to get updated. You might run into an issue where you updated Chrome or Firefox and you're using the web browser for video conferencing or web conferencing. Sometimes those have to renegotiate and you have to click, yes, you know, allow my camera to use, or to allow my browser to use my camera, allow my browser to use my microphone. So get in early so you kind of avoid some of those issues there. So, you know, I've got my invite open. I'm five minutes, 10 minutes ahead of time for this meeting here. You know, what do I do first? And guys, this is probably one of my, my, my biggest pet peeves is how people join meetings. Sometimes people come in and, and they just dial in to meetings. And, you know, that could be okay if we, if we really, really, really know that it's going to be an audio-only meeting. But a lot of times what happens, people dial in and three minutes in, someone wants to share something. And it's like, well, you know, I'm not on the web portion, but I can be. And then they come back into this invite, they click this, they try to get in on the website of things, and they don't realize they're already dialed in, and then they try to dial in again on the web portion, and you get some crazy echo. Or I've got people that call in, thinking they need to call in, they, they dial this first, and then they click the meeting, and then again, they're in, they're in twice. The first thing that you guys should do when you get an invite like this, I don't care which conferencing service you're using, is just click the link. That's it. Make it simple. I mean, unless you've got really, really, really poor bandwidth and you're on like a dial-up connection in the middle of nowhere, okay, use the telephone number. Then that's, then that's fine. But what I say is come in here, click the link. It's the easiest way to get into the meeting and it's going to cause you guys the least amount of issues. So let's go ahead and let's, and let's click that. So now... I'm presented with my view. And you know, we went in, we cleaned up our room so everything looks really nice. I don't have any of the junk behind me anymore. I changed my shirt. I'm not in a tank top anymore. And we're ready to do some video conferencing. If you're using WebEx here, you've got a couple different ways on how to join the meeting. You can use your, a video system. If you're in front of a really nice Cisco uh, video system, you can click on that. If for some reason you did dial in previously, you're not gonna wanna connect audio, so click on and make sure that this says don't connect audio. Uh, but you have some other options, and this is really where, if you're gonna dial in, this is where you're gonna wanna do it. Then you could say call in, or again, if you're using WebEx, I love the call me feature, especially if I'm traveling, I'm on the road. Hey, call me, and it just calls my, my number. And then use your computer for audio. Yeah, you know, I use this a lot of times too. I don't want to have my cell phone here. I don't have my video endpoint. You know, I'll just use my computer for audio. Again, we just want to make sure that if I'm going to do that, we test it real quick. So if I'm going to use my computer for audio, we can uh, go in here under the settings and I can take a look. Okay, my microphone is, is good here and I could also test my speakers. Yep, everything looks good. The camera is on the right one that I want to be at. Again, we'll adjust the lighting really quick. Make sure that that looks good. Make sure I don't have any windows open behind me. If you do, you might want to close the blinds there so you don't get any, any of those crazy reflections. And, and that's it. You know, we're ready at this point to join the meeting. And with that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to click start meeting. So now you're in the meeting. And guys, the first thing and probably the biggest thing that you can do when you join a meeting is... Go on mute. It'll save you guys a ton of headaches. Go on mute. That way you're not hearing anything. If the doorbell rings, someone decides to flush the toilet. Can't tell you how many times that's happened when we're on calls. There was a, uh, an article I saw the other day. It happened on a video call with Zoom, and someone's flushing the toilet in the background. So go on mute. It'll save you guys a lot of, a lot of headaches later on. Uh, the other one that I would say to do here is when you're sharing your screen... Best practice around this is share just the application. You have the option of sharing your entire screen or sharing an application. Share just the application. Again, you don't need to be sharing your screen and having your instant message windows pop up and you know your buddy is asking, hey, how was last Friday after after the happy hour? I heard things got really crazy. You know, people don't need to people don't need to be seeing that. So just make sure you're sharing just the actual application window. Uh, if you're the host, you can actually go in and you can control a lot of this here too. So you can go in, you can see uh, who's in the meeting, you can see who's on mute already for you. 
you can set rules if you want to too. Like upon entry, just mute everybody. You know, things like that sometimes are, are good ideas. But you can go in and you can mute. Or if you hear someone starting to talk in the background, sometimes people get calls, they're not on mute, and they start having another side conversation. Open it up and go in and, and mute that person that's that's talking. And the last thing as far as best practices that I would say is just make sure you pay attention when you're in a web conference or a video conferencing meeting, uh, especially around web conferencing. I, I think we tend to, hey, if I'm not on video and it's only sort of an audio web type of thing, you might minimize the window. You might be doing something else. You might be doing email and then you get called on and then you're scrambling to find the meeting window. You're like, okay, shoot, I got to get off of mute. It's 10, 15 seconds later. People are like, Jim, you there? Jim, you there? Oh, sorry, you know, I was on mute. Can you repeat the question? Pay attention. It's pretty simple these days. Pay attention. You don't run into those issues. Have the meeting window up. You know, I think video cuts down on a lot of that because most people are going to be paying attention because they're on video. They're looking at everybody. Um, But just pay attention. It's as easy as that. And then the last thing we'll talk about is leaving a meeting. Don't just minimize the window and walk away actually leave the meeting at the bottom here click leave meeting hang up your phone if you've got your phone on just make sure you exit because what happens and i've seen this multiple times a couple people don't end up leaving the meeting they just minimize the window don't even realize their video endpoint's still on or their phone is still on or whatever and you know sometimes it happens to a couple people and all of a sudden you know i'll forget to hang up and i hear another guy that was on the call drew like start playing um, direct TV or something like that in the background. And it's like, Drew, I hear you. You're not doing any work. You're listening to the daily show or something that's going on on the TV. You know, make sure you hang up. So none of that stuff happens and people aren't like, Oh, listen, you know, jump back on blah, blah, blah is, is doing this or doing that. Hang up, make sure you get off the call. And so guys, those are some of my, my tips around best practices as far as being successful around video conferencing and web conferencing. I would say too, though, guys, at the end of the day, give some leeway. Everybody's kind of in this thing together. If a dog is barking in the background, you know, don't worry about it. Let it go. Let it slide. If someone does have a mess behind them, it's not the end of the world. I can't tell you, you know, how many times too that I've mistakenly popped up video and, you know, I wasn't wearing a nice dress shirt. You know, stuff like that's going to happen or my hair wasn't wasn't combed. You know, it's going to happen. Don't worry about it. Give some leeway. So guys, I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or want to add to this, you know, please feel free to add to the discussion uh, in the bottom here and you know, we'll comment on it. So thanks a lot.